Welcome back to Biller Bike Reviews. This is the one that I think many of you have been interested in, the review on the Cervelo Aspero. So first I must say, I loved this bike. It was probably the most fun and most all around um, best package of all the ones I've reviewed so far. It feels like a road bike. And, and to me, again, coming from a road bike background, that's uh, it's very comforting. It feels right at home. I didn't have to learn a different uh, different geometry. Um, I think it goes into the fact that it's relatively long. It's got a 388 millimeter reach uh, and a relatively low stack at, at 570, uh, sorry, 555. So compared to uh, the Ibis and the Stigmata, it's the longest uh, and the lowest. Again, this one, I felt like I was on a road bike. Uh, short chain days uh, at 420 millimeters really really crisp handling really really fast uh, if I were to pick one bike uh, to have as my only bike it would be the Aspero for sure so going into just kind of the nuances in terms of why you might want to consider one bike versus the other note that the Aspero can't take as big of tires I said that in my first review the Aspero can't do the 2.1 inch tires that the Haka and the Stigmata can now for me I would only have a 700 c set for this bike but because I have a road bike already I would probably you know, lean away I don't know if the Cervelo has a spot in my stable because I want something more gravel focused than the Aspero can offer now it's a great gravel bike but I don't think it's as capable off-road as the Stigmata or, or the Haka MX. So if you are going for a gravel bike, uh, that might be the direction you want to go, depending on your riding style. If you do more technical terrain, that's the way I would go. Now, I think the performance numbers were interesting. So remember, the other two bikes were 650B. This is my first foray into a 700C uh, uh, wheel setup. And I will say, I think a lot of the compliance, as people tend to talk about now, comes down to the wheel choice, as, as well as obviously the tires. So I used the NVG23 gravel wheel set. I had a set of WTB Resolute uh, 700 by 42 tires on there, uh, running tubeless. Immediately, I noticed uh, the compliance of the G23s. So I've used a, a, an older set of wheels with this uh, this bike a couple times just to, to you know get a, a few rides in before I did the review, and it's it's immediately noticeable how much more compliant the G23 is. I didn't feel like it was unstable around turns, but I do feel like the vertical compliance they really dialed it in to to take some of the edge off. The bike is stiff, uh, but all carbon bikes are stiff. All bikes without suspension are stiff. So I will say that you shouldn't be overly concerned about this bike being too harsh. Now the 3T Explorer was harsh. That one, uh, even with 650B uh, tires, was, was uncomfortable to ride over uh, rough terrain. The Cervelo, uh, I felt totally fine. Uh, you know, decent set of gloves and, and some squishy bar tape. Everything felt, felt good. Now on to the performance numbers. So I took all three bikes and I, I put together a list of, of how each bike did on the same exact track. So as a reminder, the track was about 13 and a half miles long. Now, uh, with gravel, I'll say it again, it's impossible to get the same exact terrain each time you go, depending on the climate, uh, depending on uh, who's on the trail, for example, depending on if it's rained and there's might be ruts, so it, it is uh, a little bit of uh, art instead of science, but I do think that the numbers are, are interesting. So from a moving time perspective, the Stigmata was still the fastest uh, at just over uh, an hour. Now, the Sparrow was only 20 seconds slower, and I do think I uh, admittedly stopped to take a couple pictures, so I think I could have made up that time on the, on the Sparrow. Uh, the Hawk, on the other hand, was three minutes slower than, than the other two, and uh, I could put that down to the fact it was my first time riding the course, and I didn't know it as well. Uh, now I've ridden it a bunch of times with all these bikes, but it was three minutes slower. Now, the average miles per hour, uh, the Aspera was 13, the uh, uh, Santa Cruz was 13.1, so almost the same. The average speed on the Hawka was 12.6, was so it was uh, you know considerably slower. Now, 
looking at the power numbers, uh, my average power on the Aspera was 237 watts. I will say that I was using a left side only power meter uh, and a different one that I had to use on other bikes only because uh, I had access on one and uh, DI2 on the other. But again, 237 watts over that segment uh, with, with the Cervelo. Uh, the Santa Cruz had 245 average watts, so uh, you know, 5% higher. Uh, and then the Ibis had 232, so pretty darn close. Uh, they were all with, with, within a stone's throw. Uh, the normalized power, again, uh, could be a slightly more interesting metric. The normalized power on the Aspera was 294, uh, on the Stigmata was 310, and on the Haka was 297. So when I was working, um, I definitely put in more effort on the Stigmata. Now, I think that's interesting, and I think that goes between the 650B and 700C set, and that uh, it probably does take a bit more power to uh, overcompensate for the larger wheels and, and uh, um, you know, the more rolling resistance you have there. I will say, though, on the other hand, on steep technical terrain, when I was going slower, it was considerably easier to get the 650B wheels rotating, which made me feel faster up some more technical uh, terrain. So. Uh, as far as the two wheel sets, if you are someone that climbs very steep, very technical terrain, I would probably go with a 650B set in, in that sense. If you um, are just kind of cruising on the flats or, or more fire roads, 700 is going to be the way you want to go and I, I wouldn't look back. And the interesting thing to me was the cadence. So the gear ratio I had in the Aspero was a, a 42 ring in the front and a 1042 in the back. Uh, I actually had the highest cadence. Looking back, the way I think about that is I think I spent most of my time in the 42-42 on all of the climbs. Now, on both the Santa Cruz and the Haka, I had a 44 in the front uh, and a 1050 in the back. So uh, I could go at 44-42, which was that second to largest uh, uh, ring in the cassette. Now, I needed to be bailed out. I could get to that 50. Uh, maintaining a slightly lower cadence, which is probably more aligned with, with what I typically do. Now, top speeds I also thought were interesting. Uh, the Haka got to the highest top speed, as I mentioned, that bike is a bullet, uh, super fast bike. 40.5 miles per hour is my top speed there. Uh, the Stigmata, 37.6, and, and the Aspero, actually the slowest top speed at 34.1. Uh, on one of the larger descents, I did uh, have to stop as my glasses fogged up, so I had to take those off and, and keep going. Uh, could have changed the outcome a bit, but uh, as far as actual numbers go, there you have it. A little bit about the bike. Got a 42 centimeter Easton EC70 AX bar with uh, 12 degrees of flare. Uh, you'll see that it's a little different than I tested it. I forgot to take uh, a picture before I swapped everything back over. When it was tested, it uh, had the NV G23 gravel wheels on it. I put back on the stock uh, Alex Boondocks. Of the crank set you got an Easton EC90 SL 170 millimeter arms and a 42 tooth ring. Uh, this is powered by a DI2 drivetrain. Uh, the other ones, the other two are, are, are SRAM access. Uh, this is a 1142 cassette. I was testing with a 1042 cassette. I will say, impressions of DI2 versus SRAM. I've had a few people ask me questions on that. The DI2 definitely shifts smoother. Uh, it, feels better as it goes through the gears. That being said, I do miss that 12, uh, the, 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 the you know, grainy gear, the 12th cog, that 50. Going with a 42 and, and this setup in the, uh, in the back, I will say I wasn't able to maintain an optimal cadence as much as I was before. The big takeaway for me though was actually on the wheel size. So going with a 700C versus a 650B wheel, the wheel is quite a bit larger. Now, when you think about it, when compared to an average road wheel, uh, uh, 700 with uh, about a 28 mil tire is equivalent to a 650 with uh, you know, a 48, 50 um, a millimeter tire. But when you're going with a 42 millimeter tire on a 700 C, and that makes the wheel quite a bit larger than, than a standard 700 C wheel with a, with a 28 mil tire. And what it felt like to me was, it was almost taking away a gear. So as I went to a larger wheel, it was harder to get that wheel in motion, especially on steep climbs. And having a little extra or a little easier gear actually made quite a big difference as I, as I went to a larger wheel size. So I did notice that 
when we had the one-to-one, the 42-42, one, the made it considerably harder as I went up hills. So if you're someone with maybe uh, weaker legs or someone that wants to spin faster, I would recommend probably going with a 40 in the front if you only have a 42 in the rear. Uh, XT, you can also get uh, an 11-46. So with a 42 and a 46, that might be a good way of doing it if you're not going with access. All in, the, the um, Ultegra XTR group set does weigh about 300 grams less than the SRAM Access, and it costs about $1,000 less. So I would say if you're on a budget uh, and you want to try and go with the, uh, the Ultegra setup instead of the Access, uh, it saves you weight and saves you quite a bit of money. Going back here, uh, again, uh, 160 millimeter rotors front and back. Uh, you'll notice that this bike has a, a 54 um, centimeter seat tube, so I was able to show a little bit more at the seat post than on, uh, on, like on the Ibis, not quite as much as I was on the Stigmata. The reach on this bike, uh, 388, so the longest reach of any of the bikes, but it does have only a 90 millimeter stem, so they've chosen more of a mountain bike approach, long reach, shorter stem. Now, as a reminder, this bike isn't designed to have 10 different bottle holders everywhere and fenders all over the place and mounts to go packing for, for days on end. It's meant to go fast, and that's typically my type of riding. A couple of nice features of the frame that I do like is there's two different mount points for your front water bottle, depending on if you're going to use a rear. There is a bento box mount at the top, which is covered by a, a little plastic flap. I did find issues getting that plastic flap to stay down, so I actually had to go to the hardware store and buy some double-sided tape, and there's a little stronger than what it came with in order to keep that down. There's a, a, a guard underneath the, the down tube here to protect against chips. There's also a guard on the chain stay to protect against uh, chain flapping. A couple other things I really like about the frame, uh, as you've probably heard, if you're uh, if you're looking at this bike, it does have the, the flip shift front on the fork. Uh, I didn't move it uh, front and back because I didn't actually test the 650B set uh, on this bike. My opinion on 650B is uh, I wouldn't really you know, see a value in it unless I could go with a volume tire above two inches. So call it 52 centimeters. Uh, going from a 42 centimeter tire to a 48 or 49 centimeter tire, yeah, you get a little more volume, but I personally don't see uh, the need to do that, so I didn't test on this bike. If I were going with the Cervelo, I would run it in 700. I wouldn't think twice about going with 650B. The one thing I would consider is uh, having this as my only bike. It felt amazing uh, on the road as well as off-road. You could easily have two sets of tires for this bike and have it be really your, your quiver killer. Now that we have some of the performance numbers out of the way, let's talk about the bike subjectively. All in, I really liked the Aspero. Uh, it was really fast, it was easy to control, it was uh, compliant enough for, for what I needed to do, and it got me where I, where I needed to go. Now, when I got to the road sections, I still felt like I was in control. I didn't feel like the, the, the tires, the wheels were washing out. I mean, I could point the thing downhill where I wanted to go, and it would go exactly, uh, exactly there. Um, I, I think, again, if I were to make a recommendation for somebody that uh, rides 700C wheels mostly, wants a bike that can go both on the road uh, and on the trails, the Cervelo Aspera would, would be the one I'd recommend. Now, if you're someone that wants to go bike packing and spend days in the woods and put your, you know, uh, couch and your tent and uh, everything else you, in your worldly possession on your bike. Not going to be the bike for you. Not as many uh, places to, to, to mount gear. No fender mounts. So if you're someone that wants to commute on this bike, probably not the best bike for you. But if you're someone that really just wants to ride the bike, this Sparrow is going to be, be a, great, uh, a great fit for you.